We just got a brand new Nintendo Direct today, all about Pokemon Sword and Shield. Callie, you're our Pokemon expert. Uh, what is the biggest thing that stood out to you? Well, if you're talking about biggest, we can talk about Dynamaxing, the thing that makes Pokemon giant. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dynamaxing is a new battle mechanic, um, kind of like a hybrid of Mega Evolution and Z moves in some ways. So you can only use it once per battle. And it only lasts three turns, right? Yes. And it makes your Pokemon huge, like Kaiju huge, and um, increases power and stuff like that. And you also have uh, moves called Max moves, which are like, powerful versions of the moves your Pokemon already have. Apparently they can vary based on what those existing moves were. Um, so there's elements of strategy, it seems, to um, like when you choose to Dynamax, which Pokemon you Dynamax with, uh, your opponent can Dynamax. Um, battling gym leaders, they'll be able to do this. Yeah, it looks like the new gym stadiums are definitely built for these Dynamaxing Pokemon. Yeah, cause because the stadiums, the stadiums are, huge. are huge. And there's people in the crowds and they said, when, when a Pokemon Dynamaxes, the crowd will go crazy. Yeah. Um, there's also Dynamax Pokemon that feed into uh, another cool mechanic, which is raid battles. So um, you can partner up. This is one of the multiplayer features. You can team up with up to four people. If you don't have four people, they'll like autofill with support trainers, uh, is my understanding. And um, you take on a Dynamaxed wild Pokemon. Yeah, it's called a Max Raid. Yeah and you apparently want to bring your best Pokemon into that battle, and then if you beat them, you'll get the opportunity to catch. Kind of like Pokemon Go. That's yeah, kind of like Pokemon works. Go, except you have a giant Pokeball that you throw at these giant Pokemon, yeah, which I guess big. makes sense. That does make sense. Like with Let's Go, they're bringing in elements of Pokemon Go and the things people like about Pokemon Go without making it just exactly Go. There's even some, it looks like some influences from Pokemon Let's Go. We saw the wild area, which, is basically seems like an open area, almost like a Breath of the Wild-esque. You can control the camera, you can explore different regions or different areas of Galar that have, seems like different weather, different kinds of Pokemon you can catch, and the Pokemon are kind of just wandering around in the wild. Yeah, so the wild area seems like a catch-all term for just the areas of like the expanse of nature in between cities. So you can go to like, obviously there will be like grassland and mountains and different, um, biomes and yeah depending on the weather depending on where you are you'll encounter different pokemon um those raid battles happen in the wild area and yeah you see pokemon wandering around just mm -hmm. like in let's go the thing that was confusing from watching the trailer uh, was that it's not exactly clear if all the battles are like opt-in like in let's go where you approach the pokemon yeah. Or if there are, there is some element of random encounter. But from what I can tell, it seems like random encounters are mostly out. And uh, even in the tall grass, you see like a, an exclamation point before entering a battle. But even that, you have to approach the exclamation point. Yeah, my in guess the grass. is the areas where you can control the camera. That is where you'll see the Pokemon wandering around the wild. But in the ones you can't, there might be light random encounters. Maybe like the the exclamation point in the grass that you can walk up to. At least from what, what I can tell, it seems like you don't know what Pokemon you're gonna get in those encounters, yeah. but it's not just gonna like happen to you. you yeah, well, what'll be interesting is caves, whether or not caves will, Zubats will randomly attack you. Yeah, I don't know how they're, they wouldn't be able to fit Zubats and the bigger Pokemon, like how are you gonna fit Onix in the way that mine shaft works, you know? Yeah, don't know. <laughs> um, I actually think this is a cool change. I like that I'll be able to see Pokemon in the overworld. I think that the wild area looks really open world-like and really big. Um, even like going in the water, you can see Pokemon in the water, you see evolved forms of things. Yeah, like, that was one thing that you saw a lot of in Let's Go. You'd see Charizards flying around, for example. In this, you see uh, Melodic just swimming around, which has typically been known as a Pokemon that's very difficult to get. You have to get a Phoebus, which is hard to get. And yeah, Phoebus is like, you have to like click on a certain tile, or you used to have to go to a certain tile and it was random. You didn't know what tile it was mm -hmm. until you caught a Phoebus, and even then you only had a certain chance. So that's refreshing. I'm happy about that, because yeah. I love Melodic, one of my favorites. Another interesting thing is how you traverse those areas too. It seems like the bike is back. That's something that wasn't in Let's Go, which was surprising because that was in Red and Blue. And it also wasn't in Sun and Moon because you had ride sharing, or ride, ri <laughs> ride sharing. We'll actually get to that later with the with the new Edgar Allan Poe bird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems like your bike will play a huge role in that there's that one image of there's balloons on the side of the bike. So yeah. it looks like that almost takes the place of surf. There's another screenshot with bikes that sparks are coming out of the wheels. Not entirely sure what that's for. It's really, really brief. Like the the, mm -hmm. the bike stuff is really brief in the trailer. Um, and I missed it the first time I watched it. But yeah, I really liked Ride Pokemon. I liked the freedom. I like that that makes more sense within the world of Pokemon. Um, 
and it seems like there's a blend of your bike and a right Pokemon. Yeah, but but maybe not in the same sense as no, we saw in Sun and Moon sense. because it sounds like that one Pokemon whose name I'm forgetting. Corviknight. Uh, it kind of seems like Corviknight acts as your fly. Like once you visit a city, you can go find him in that city and find that bird in that city and you can fly to a different city that you've already been to. So yeah, I'm curious how those other abilities will work like cut or or a strength or something like that. I, I hope they're gone. Let's get to the new Pokemon then. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it. Um, I really like the designs of this generation so far. I think, you know, people complain about designs from all generations, but these are looking pretty good. The first one is Wooloo. Uh, it's a sheep Pokemon. I, I'm curious about what type it is. We already have an electric sheep. I think it's normal. I don't know. Whenever I don't, I don't know. know, I'm always like, it's, it's a normal? normal type. Yeah, um, but I like it. I like the design a whole lot. Then there's Gossiflor. Um, the flowering Pokemon, it looks definitely grass. Uh, we also see that uh, with a grass type gym leader, which we'll get to in a second. That evolves into Eldegoss, which is... Which is the same, but with like a giant thing on its head. Yeah. There's also Dreadnought, which is the bite Pokemon. I, I like, I think that's my favorite one of the ones that they've mm -hmm. shown off. Yeah, happy with that. Uh, then there's Corviknight, like we mentioned, mm -hmm. the flying type Pokemon. That Steel, one... Steel, probably. Corviknight. It's gotta be steel. <laughs> Maybe, I think it's just based on like the Ravens and the Tower of London. Yeah. So, we also gotta look at the new legendaries. There's Zacian, the sword legendary, and then Zamazenta, the shield legendary. And they look very similar, except for the, you know, one has a sword in its mouth and one it's has got a, a shield beard. Shield beard. Well, which one do you think you'll pick? Uh, I really like the sword one, but I think everyone's gonna like the sword one. And you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be a sheep, unless it's Wulu, <laughs> so. I think the interesting thing about these two legendaries is that most Pokemon games don't have legendaries that are like swaps of each other or super similar. Like the Latios and Latias would be the one that jumps out to me. But, but like, those weren't even like the mascot yeah, Pokemon for that. It was Kyogre. Kyogre. Yeah. And then finally we got info on the characters in the story. The only thing that I thought was weird was that they announced the champion. I feel like typically they wait until like yeah, that's always like the reveal. The twist yeah, the is champion like, is like someone like, you've been talking to the whole time. Yeah, and whatever. this time they're, which I'm kind of okay with because those twists were always like, yeah, whatever. I do want to note that uh, we got like Galar region culture, mm -hmm. and that would be like Pokemon battles are a really big deal. That's why the stadiums are, in addition to having room for those like giant football. Pokemon, yeah, like soccer, football, <laughs> and then. Um, Pokemon also work alongside people in the Galar region. Yeah, there's that little like, why not run around that I think yeah, is really adorable. like a Badoo on a <laughs> on a counter. I, I don't think that's like unique. I think a lot of games have that, but this is the one where it's most explicitly mm -hmm. stated. Like, yeah, Pokemon are part of the economy. The one red flag that I noticed was Milo. I don't like Milo at all. The, 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 <laughs> the grass the, type Yeah, I don't like him. Why? He's a buff man with a child's head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say to that. And that's everything we noticed in the Pokemon Nintendo Direct. Uh, if there's anything we missed, please let us know in the comments below. And this comes out November 15th, 2019. Until next time. <laughs>